So today we're going to talk about uh, stresses in beams. And um, on this topic, we're going to discuss the stress and strain of your beams. So coming from the shear and moment diagrams that we have discussed so far. So <clears throat> we are still going to utilize that one, but this time is we're going to take some information coming from the shear and moment diagrams and use that particular information to solve for the particular stress <clears throat> and strain of your beams. <clears throat> okay, but start first with the concept of your stresses. <clears throat> okay, so for your bending and flexure stress. <clears throat> so for example, as you can see in figure A.1, so for example, your beam has no loading. So there's no um, bending or let's say deflection made in your, in your structure. But once we apply your loadings, let's say in figure A.2, so you have here concentrated load and um, a uniformly distributed load. So at some point, so um, your beam will kind of have will kind of, will have a uh, deformation. Uh, so of course it so it might not always be symmetrical because the loading might not be equal all the time. But we can see some sort of um, deflection or bending in your structure. So <clears throat> so why is the top why is this topic so important? Because later on, once you reach reinforced concrete design, so mo nishay nyo balik balik kon o kanang soft kaning inyo hang kon deflection and deformation sa inyo hang beam, or let's say you're going to solve for the the flexure stress because that that's what's important in the design of your element, especially when you're designing beams and girders. So you're going to solve for the maximum moment, and then you're going to um, solve for the maximum stress, so on and so forth. But um, don't worry, once you reach reinforced concrete design, ang nakanindot lang sa design ng mga subjects is that balik-balik lang ang iyahang procedure. So of course, um, in the design aspect, we want to achieve the most economical design. So meaning smaller size, but um, uh, not totally smaller size, but kind of appropriate sizing na makakarry sa loading. Na. So muna siya ang inyong i-think about later once, once you reach concrete design or let's say steel design even, di ba? <clears throat> okay, so... <clears throat> If we're going to take a certain element in your, let's say, beam before the deflection happened and after the deflection happened, so notice that there are certain elements that you can say that um, has stretched or the other one has kind of shrunk, di ba? So na I ni extend or let's say na I part ng intention, na I part ng dili. Uh, my part money compress and then there's also a part na the same gap on length so what i'm talking about is um if you look at figure 2.3 so notice that in the original segment ab in the top fiber of the beam so notice that once the loading has been applied there's a certain uh, stretching diba i mean there's a stretch uh, a certain compression so from the original point, ba? May mo siyang diring a point na, di ba? So AB compresses. In the bottom fiber of your beam, CD, so notice this one is the original length. So kana siya certain, kana na siya certain element na siya sa yung beam. So <clears throat> once the bending has happened, so the bottom fiber stretches. So notice that this one is the original point, then going towards this location here. 
So kanina siya original point sa B and then ni compress siya. Now the only thing that hasn't um, changed in length is the middle fiber. Kanina middle fiber niya. And this middle fiber is the neutral axis of your beam. Okay, neutral axis. <clears throat> so, so usually neutral axis, in other words, it also means the center of gravity or let's say center of mass of your um, element. So <clears throat> I think what, what you will be trying to be looking at the problem slater is always a rectangular beam, but for the design of beams later on, so you'll be encountering T beams. So may naanin na siya. Usually kanin T beam is muna siya ang yung ma encounter usually sa design sa concrete. So muna T beams siya because in real construction, it's a combination of slab plus beam. Muna T beam siya. Slab plus beam na siya. Uh, beam. Okay, so for example, muna siya ang slab, niya gi-incorporate ra ang beam niya at some point. Okay, para murag, um, I think it's for the ease of construction. That's why it's um, <coughs> T-beam na siya. Ba, magsumpay-sumpay mo na yung mga elements later. Diri mo na siya ipatong-patong, di ba? So we have to make some sort of connection in our construction. <clears throat> okay, so also notice in figure 2.2 here that we have some designations in our um, moment and shear. Okay. So if the left side is this um, sign convention, the right side is another sign convention. So it should be kanang opposing on the left side and the right side okay, para neutralize ya yeah. so if the shear is going up on the left side the shear is going down on the right side <clears throat> so moment is clockwise on the left side moment is counterclockwise on the right side now if you're going to ask what's the meaning of m1 plus dm and then v1 plus dv so it's just the derivation process later on for the formula for bending and flexure stress. So I'm not going to deal with this super um, detailed na discussion on derivation because um, later on, <clears throat> uh, formula kay magbalik -balik siya because we are dealing with most likely a rectangular um, uh, beam. <clears throat> So if you want to learn how to derive the formula, so you might as well look at the book. And I think in the next few slides also, the process of the derivation for the formula is also presented. Okay, so... <clears throat> Again, as what I have discussed um, in the previous slide, so there's a certain deformation that is happening. Okay. So if we investigate a section of the beam along a cutting plane through line BD, so the section must have shear force V and then bending moment M to hold the segment in equilibrium. So the resisting bending moment is provided by the internal stresses of the beam fibers. And the stress is called bending or a flexural stress. So as you can see on the right figure, so notice the, the stress distribution <clears throat> of the bending stress. So notice that as what I told you earlier, ang top fiber ay mo compression di ba originally from the original position so notice that the direction of the stress is going this way and then it zeroes out in the neutral axis because there's no change in the element 
of the fiber in the middle or in the neutral axis. In the bottom fiber is stretches. That's why the force or the let's say the stress is going outwards. So if we try to manually draw lines here, so parang po siya. So uh, inside arrow ni tanan, up until zero, and then ni siya is outside arrow. <clears throat> Okay, so if we also want to determine the, let's say the strain diagram. So of course we know that by a simple definition of strain. So that would be elongation over the original length. So that's why when you look at the figure, <clears throat> the deformation of the fiber at located at Y distance. So Y distance, this one is here. Kaning morag hidden line, this is the y distance. <clears throat> and then angle theta. Okay, so again, um, if, if you're going to look at the figure and then you try to um, <clears throat> you try to track down the, de the derivation aspect. So when you try to view the, the equation and the figure, okay? So, so I leave that one to you para at least delicate kas o goras kay mas importante ang examples nila. <clears throat> okay, so just imagine that um, this equation one is coming from this general um, definition of strain. So elongation over the original length. So that would be equation number one. Okay, so we try to further define the equation by using Hooke's law. So we all know this from the previous discussion. So this would be our formula. Strain is equal to stress over the modulus of elasticity. And then we try to incorporate two and equation one. So that's why we have this equation here. So isolating or let's say, um, letting the stress be on one side and all the other variables on, on another side. So we have this equation here. Y is equal, Y times the modulus of elasticity all over rho. <clears throat> okay. So the resisting moment M offered by the section is provided by the rotational effect of the forces exerted by the internal fibers. So a fiber located at distance y exerts a force df over sigma dA, which creates moment about the center of the amount of Tm is equal to y df. So, <clears throat> So for a certain element, let's say you are going to, let's say, want to know the resisting moment on this part, part here. So all you have to do is to go to the neutral axis and then determine the certain force and then multiply it with the distance. That's why it's dm, dif differential moment is equal to the distance times the differential force. So, so of course, since we are trying to derive the formula, so that's why we are taking a certain element of your beam and creating it as a differential section or let's say differential element of your moment. So that's why we are talking about differential force, differential area, differential moment, so on and so forth. So again, it's just force times distance, right? Force and then times distance. So and for the stress, since we have the area of the beam, let's say this one is the area of your beam. So again, coming from the basic fundamentals of stress, that is just force over area. So again, since we are not still um, we are not still um, defining exactly what the, the beam is, that's why we are 
getting it as differential force and differential area, and also differential moment and differential force. So, um, of course, if you again, um, the purpose of this slide is to just locate the different um, stresses per element of your beam. So, let's say I'm going to take a certain stress here, cutting a fiber jerry, a certain distance um, from the neutral axis. So, if, so if I want to determine that moment and stress, so all I so all I have to do is to determine the force here, then determine the distance, diba? So I'm going to get the stress and the moment on this particular um, fiber of the beam. Okay. So 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 more na yung button. Let's balik balik kaya na siya. Okay, so the revision aspect. So coming from equation three on the previous slides. So we have equation four coming from the derived portion of that certain element. And we combine equations three and four. So what we'll have is this major equation here. The bending or flexure stress is equal to the moment times the distance, that's the distance going to the neutral axis, okay? All over I, that is the moment of inertia. So, so usually, one the general equation for bending or flexure stress. So in some books, there are different variations of your bending and flexure stress, uh, flexure stress depending on the let's say the element of the beam i mean the shape of the beam so other books have them simplified already by applying the y in the equation and also the i in the equation so ilan ang that ang i here because um, i mean the y here because let's say y here is just um let's say h over 2 diba okay it's always at the center of a rectangular beam then let's say you have a certain I for rectangular shape beam. So incorporating the different elements, so mana must simplify sha into a simpler uh, into a simpler version of this general equation. Yeah, more shag specified to a specific um, shape of the beam. So of course normally we don't naturally see other shapes but rectangle, diba? So, muna siya ang general equation for your bending stress. So, my over i. So, in other books, I think it's mc over i po na siya ang other books, as far as I can recall. So, again, it's just the same um, solution. I mean, formula, but ang um, pag-declare lang sa variables might be different in some um, references. <clears throat> so again, this is the general equation. So sigma is the bending or flexure stress. M is the bending moment. Y is the distance from the neutral axis to the fiber. Okay. And then moment of inertia is with respect to the neutral axis as well. So we also have this one in the prior topics that we have discussed. Okay, so here are some common figures. So again, naturally, we just have to deal with this type of kaning beam, diba? Kaning rectangular shape beam. So of course, more super rare kay natay triangular beam, diba? And also a circular beam. So circular column siguro kanang haligi. So we might see those in in the construction business, but for a beam, siguro, might as well super rare as siguro siya. Most likely rectangular shape yun siya. Okay, so muna siya ang commonly used. That's why in the design, pula na mo tanawan ni formula. Kaning BH cube over 12. 
Okay, you still have to use this moment of inertia once you go to your design process. Okay, so you also have here the um, area and the centroid, or let's say the distance going to our, towards the neutral axis. And also the moment of inertia for the curve shape figures. So if you might recall your, um, if you have solid mensuration, or let's say solid geometry in your senior high. So the way on how you derive your, um, let's say distance towards the centroid is by using the transfer formula. Okay. So a transfer formula, because you have to set where your reference sign on distance is, diba? So there it's referring at the top portion of this, let's say semicircle, diba, Kanisha? But of course, we can also derive a certain um, y distance if you refer it at the bottom part of this for uh, this shape, diba? So you might as well call this also as y bar. So of course, it's not for r over, th over three pi, but you still have to derive the equation using transfer formula. So it looks sure if it's the correct term, but um, transfer formula is what's the recurring um, term in design aspect. Okay, of course, it's a design man good is really, um, really don't have a certain type of reference okay. Okay, since magsumpay sumpay naman elements, so we have to set um, our our lines on a certain on a certain point. So let's say kaniyang yung semicircle um, sa top man siya naka, naka refer di ba? So in the design aspect, it, it might not always be that you have to refer at the top portion of the semicircle. So you can also refer it at the bottom part, but again, you still have to look for the certain formula. So using using the transfer formula. So katong, I think it's Varignon's theorem plus the transfer formula. Katong na ay AD squared gani. So muna siya. Basta katong marag, muna siya ang formula, then... Uh, equals plus then a d squared and uh, marina na tong formula. <clears throat> okay, more naturally mga good if we are going to the design aspect, more ang uh, among ibot sa una is na may mga list of mga formula based na. But we have to use the transfer formula if we have to relocate the neutral axis. Labi na if it's t beam, di ba? Na. So let's say if it's t beam, if it's a composite figure. So what you have to do is, let's say, um, we can refer it here. Ba? So magdepende na siya. Or we can refer it above the one. So that's why it's important to know the transfer formula because if you have a composite figure, so kana, medyo liso na mga pag sa neutral axis. Okay. So this is one example of the Kaning koan, kaning uh, more specified formula. So if you have a rectangular beam, so notice that your bending moment is, I mean, your um, bending stress is this one, 6m over bd squared. So this one is right? But it's also, so if you want to um, use 6m over bd squared, so pretty sad. But again, it's just coming from my over i gap on the formula. But um, defined lang, clearly defined lang ang y and n and ang moment of inertia. That's why it's simplified into 6m over bd squared. Okay. <clears throat> so, of course, um, we can clearly state that the y distance is um, coming from the y distance about on definition is going to the fiber, certain fibers. So of course, since we are trying to determine the maximum shear stress, so it's on the outer portion. Right? 
So the beam, the rectangular beam experiences the the maximum stress on the end fibers. Atong diagram is inaanin mo to, di ba? Para equal na ko. <clears throat> okay. So again, you can try to memorize just one formula, MC over I, MY over I, or you can just memorize this one, rectangular bending stress, which is 6M over BD. So you just have to look for the moment, and then you have to determine the dimensions of your beam, the base, and the depth of your beam. Then you can get the maximum um, bending stress for your rectangular section. So if it's the other way around, let's say it's not a rectangular section. So you go back to the previous slides to refer the different distances of your Y and also for your moment of inertia. So again, um, we rarely see other shapes for beams except for rectangle because that's what is commonly used. <clears throat> Okay, so that's for the um, the stress or the bending stress, flexure stress in beams. Let's now go to the shear stress in beams. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so the resisting shear force V is provided by the internal fibers. So each shear fiber of the beam exerts stress parallel to the area. Uh, okay, so come on, let's read Okay, so this is the derivation part of the shear stress of the beam. So medyo madugo siya because it again it deals with um, calculus should so differential element differential shear so on and so forth differential area okay so so um, fast forward to the formula formula for the shear stress in beam is this one, VQ over IB. This is, again, the general equation for the shear stress in beam. So of course, if we are going to get the shorter version of this formula with respect to a rectangular beam, so it's coming in the, few, in the next few slides. Okay, so VQ over IB. So you just have to look for the shear stress on the, on the particular element of your beam. So of course, um, again, um, di ba ang ato ang formula sa ato ang shear or bending? I mean, our bending stress, flexure stress is MY over I. Okay. So the question would be, where do we get the moment and the V aspect? for the formula. So of course, since we have discussed shear and moment diagrams, so you're going to get this sa inyohang shear and moment diagrams. So, ready na siya, inyong button. So create the shear and moment diagrams first. That's why maragdagan to problems akong ibutang sa shear and moment because you have to master the shear and moment diagram uh, topic because it will still be included in the higher subjects, I mean, higher topics. Okay, so Q is the static moment of area. It's just equal to A times uh, bar Y. Or let's say the Y lang siguro katong going towards the neutral axis. Okay, so you have MY over I and then you have VQ over IB. That would be for the, the, the bending and the shear stress, respectively. OK. 
Okay, so the shear stress in beams is VQ over I. So uh, tau is shear stress, V is shear force, Q A is equal to A Y, static moment of area. And then I is the moment of inertia about the neutral axis. So the stress distribution of your, um, the stress distribution in the beam is in the, parab in the parabola shape. Okay, because it is increasing towards the middle fiber of your beam. So let's say it. Um, what I'm talking about is that the maximum shear stress is occurring at the neutral axis of your uh, beam. Maximum shear is at the neutral axis. Is at neutral axis. Okay. So sa koan sa inyong bending stress, the maximum bending stress is at the top and the bottom fibers. For the maximum shear, it is at the center of your rectangular beam. Or let's say it, it, it is at the neutral axis. Okay, so one is So it's a parabola. So why is it a parabola? So of course, if you try to um, combine this one with the uh, earlier nga moment diagram, ba? So paanam to siya, di ba? I mean the stress distribution, diba? So if you're going to create a shear, so maragana siya, diba? Okay, you wanna shine your forces. Diba? Forces. So notice that this one is um, a linear, so muna curve na in your shear stress. So coming from, uh, basa, sabta ninyo nga, it's coming from the shear in moment na topic. Diba? Coming from the stress distribution, well, you have different you know, um, varying loads and you have beam. Now, if this one is translated into a shear diagram, it's a, parabol it's a parabolic uh, figure. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so the maximum shear occurs at the neutral axis. So again, VQ over AB. So if we, if we're going to get the simplified version for rectangular beam, this would be the formula: three V all over two BD. Okay, so muna siya ka ng <clears throat> um, shortcut na siya. So for maximum bending stress, you have 6M over BD, BD cube, no? BD cube. Uh, BD squared, eh? BD squared. So you have two shortcut formulas. So one is uh, for the shear stress that is uh, 3V over <clears throat> 2BD, and then the other one would be for the bending stress, 6M all over BD squared. So, poor siya shortcut formula, di ba? So, muna atong shortcut because puro man siya rectangular, um, rectangle beam atong main counter. So, if ever ka nang trip trip lang, ana, let's say, mag trip trip mo design o other shapes, let's say, you're going to Kung naha mag triangular nga beam, uh, sa, di ba? but you're going to have to deal with the general equation. And you have to refer the individual um, y distance and moment of inertia for that particular kind of um, shape. So, anama siya, di ba? Mag -trip -trip lang ba na? so, of course, it's not impossible to design such other shapes, di ba? but 
Um, of course, you have to deal with the uh, with the difficulty of um, let's say the design aspect panasha, the difficulty in transferring your forces to other elements. So mo na siya hang i i think in general. So on top load is mag transfer na siya kutub pa dun sa footing ana. Na if line siya nga shape, so the behavior of the distribution of stress is different from rectangular beams. So kuna siya yung timanan line line siya gan stress distribution per shape. Okay, so let's now go to some sample problems. <clears throat> okay, so a cantilever beam is 75 meters wide by 100 feet, 100, um, 75 millimeters wide and 150 millimeters high, three meters long. So 75 mm wide and then 100 mm high and then going towards this direction is 3 meters diba and this one is 75 mm so cantilever beams yeah so since it's a cantilever beam, so you might expect a drawing like this one. So in the X and Y plane, it might look like this. The cantilever or overhanging beam. Now fix on one end, free on the other end. So this is three meters. Or it could be the other way around. It could also be facing right side on the right side. Uh, three meters, and then this one would be fixed. Now it could either be the two orientation. So it supports a triangular load that varies from zero at the free end to six kilonewton per meter on the fixed end. So if we're going to utilize the first drawing, so it might be from zero on the free end, then going towards six kilonewton per meter. Diba? So this is six kilonewton per meter. So if it's the other way around, Sad, so zero at the free end, it's talking about the free end. It starts from zero, then going six kilonewton on the end portion. Nah, so PD put say nana diba? Six kilonewton per meter. So compute the magnitude and location of the maximum flexural stress. So you have to determine this one. Determine also the type and magnitude of bending stress in a 25 mm uh, fiber from the top. So meaning if this one is the cross section, and let's say this is the neutral axis. So you have to determine the certain bending stress or flexure stress, 25 millimeters from the top. Uh, 25 millimeters from the top. So what I'm going to show is about the being item. For the C, compute the maximum shear stress. Okay, and then for D is compute the maximum shearing stress develop in the fiber 50 mm from the neutral axis at the end of one meter from the fixed end. So one meter, so probably this one here, maybe one meter, right? <clears throat> then 50 mm fiber from the neutral axis. Okay, so let's start and try to solve them one by one. So let's say ang atong i-utilize ka to lang siguro 0 to 6 lang siguro. So this would be our sa <coughs> Okay, 
Okay, so let's say this is our drawing. So, ito lang panindutan ang drawing nga para. And this would be the loading. So, 6 kN per meter. Okay. So, 0 to 6 kN per meter. So what I have to do first is to solve for the reactions. So we have to solve this reaction here. So and we also have to solve for the moment. moment. So the moment from the fixed end is let's say counterclockwise. So it should be um, this one it should be clockwise, diba? opposing the moment coming from the 6 kN per meter loading. Okay, so again, the first thing that we need to do is to solve for the reaction forces. So um, solving for the reaction. <clears throat> Okay, so summation of force is vertical, so it's automatic, so we don't have to take moments anymore. So pitira siya ang, ang moment later on would be the moment in the fixed end. So summation of forces vertical is equal to zero. Let's say this is the reaction, R. So R is equal to, of course, it's just the area of the triangular loading, di ba? One half base times height. So this one is three meters and then times six, diba? Then you're going to have nine kilonewtons for the reaction. And then taking moments about the fixed end is equal to zero. So moment is equal to one half, again, base times height, three times six, and then times the centroid right? of your triangular loading, which is one third coming from the other end. Right? That would be one third times three, right? because we are on the bigger side of the triangle. And this would give us still nine gap on nine kilonewton per meter. Okay. So after obtaining your reaction forces, so so of course um, we're going to look for the shear and the moment. So of course the moment is nine kilonewton per meter. Ang shear so automatically shear is just equal to nine kilonewton. But for the cunning fixed end, but for the other portions of your triangular loading, so it might be different. Ang yahang shear distribution. That's why we're going to create the shear and moment diagrams next okay para kibata og unsaon pag determine sa different <clears throat> kanakuan elements sa inyong uh, per meter di ba ang inyong shear distribution so let's try to draw the shear and moment so balik yapon mo sa shear and moment diagram yapon Okay, so starting from zero, 
ma zero man And then of course the triangular loading one half base times height. So since it's going down, diba? So you're going to have a curve um, line here. So first degree line, diba? First degree. The next one would be second degree. So one half base times height. So that would be nine gapon. So this would be the nine kilonewton per meter. I mean, nine kilonewton. Diba? Then going up nine kilonewton. So it is zero, diba? So may siya inyo hang shear diagram. So don't forget to label the part here, 9 kilonewton. Okay, so again, first degree on triangular loading, second degree na in hang shear diagram. For the moment diagram, that would be still be the same. So second degree area of your shear diagram would be one third base times height. <clears throat> one third base times height. So, um, Juanio is still nine gapon. So, nine here and the nine going to zero. So, of course, the this one would be now a third degree. First degree, straight line, curve down on next diagram, second degree, then we'll further increase here on the other um, diagram, a third degree now. So this is nine kilonewton per meter. So again, if you look at question number one, so compute the magnitude and location of the maximum flexural stress. So looking at the shear and moment diagrams, you can say that the maximum flexural stress is occurring at the fixed end. Back on fixed point. Okay. So, oops, sorry. So by calculating first the maximum shear stress. So max is equal to 6m times BD squared. So all I have to do is six times nine kilonewton per meter. Then the, the dimensions of your uh, beam ba? would be base is 75 times 150 squared. So take note that this one is mm cubed, diba? And then the nine kilonewton per meter, nine kilonewton per meter. So if we try to, let's say, um, create the right units to get the megapascal. So you have to multiply this one by 1000 para newton per mm squared. Yeah. Or you may try to convert meter into mm a para may mo siyang um, megapascal directly. Okay. So I think um, you have to multiply here. Parang wala naman siguro kay I think if you convert meter into mm, so that would be ah ang imo multiply dahil kay one million dahil multiply one million. So let me try to erase lang para mas maklaro siya. So if I'm going to create this into a specified unit, so six times nine times one million, one times 10 to the power of six, this would be Newton per mm na siya. Then divided by 75 times 150 squared, mm and then times mm squared diba? Right? 
So cancel out millimeter, cancel out millimeter. What we'll have here is the answer. So in mega Pascal, yeah. Okay. So it's 32, diba? 32 mega Pascal. And then don't forget, since it's asking for the location, so we can just write on the right side at the fix support or let's say at the support lang siguro pwede na kay you only have one support naman sa di ba okay. it's just uh, it's a cantilever beam sa so you only have one support okay so that's for the first part now let's go to letter b so determine the type of Determine the type and magnitude of the bending stress in a fiber 25 millimeters from the top of the section. So, <clears throat> so dili na tama drawing na, okay? So let me change the color first. So if I'm going to draw the Sorry. So seventy five, and then let's say this is the neutral axis. It's just B over two. So we can say this one is seventy five. This one is also 75, and then the total would be 150. Okay, so the problem is asking the bending stress in the fiber 25 millimeters from the top of the section, one meter from the fixed end. Okay, so one meter from the fixed end, that would be. Um, one meter diba? from the right side. So 25 millimeter would be in this portion here. Diba? This is the 25 millimeter mark. So of course, if we're, if we're trying to draw the 3D diagram, so it might look like this one. So let's try to kind of Okay, so let's say this one is the fixed end here. Yeah. So going towards the fiber, so this is one meter distance. Now, one meter distance from the fixed end. Okay, so one meter distance from the But of course, um, pindira na siya dili drawing kay medyo maglibog na tali ba? Dagan na kay elements ng atong drawing. So, pwede rin sa blue ang inyong drawing. And then, you can just solve for the specific stress at 1 meter from the fixed end. So, napadili kayo siya ng gubutan na ako ninyo ang drawing. Pwede rin siya wala ni siyang green part here. But, ako lang siyang drawing para makita nyo it's you are solving the specific fiber at 1 meter from the fixed end or from the fixed support. Okay, so if you are solving here, so look at the left figure, can you share more diagrams? You are solving on this portion here, one meter from the fixed end. <clears throat> okay, so again, since you are 
solving on that particular portion, diba? so we have to also determine its um, particular shear and moment on that location. Diba? O pila na siya. So all you have to do is to, again, just solve the, the area. Kung ah, siya na putol. So putlon ni mo siya and then you solve on the left portion. Or you can just um, refer to the kaning inyohang shear diagram. Pero medyo lisod siya because you have to, of course, um, di siya lisod because if you are going to cut here, so medyo ma ma-determine nyo, mura, siya, mura mo mag-share in moment again, but you just have to verify these points lang. Ana. Kung sa pila yung magnitude na niya, yung kanya siya, pila po niya magnitude 1 meter from the fixed end. Okay? So first, we have to draw the cut portion. So let's say, muna siya yung triangular loading. So now, so this is now two meters, diba? So what would be the shear? What would be the shear? So nine kilonewton man ta. So pila na ang magnitude sa inyo ha if it's one meter from the end. So that would be six, diba? So ano six? So just try to solve why it's the distributed load is now six. So kanisya triangular loading nyo is now six instead of nine. So of course, for every meter divided by three, so meaning per meter, that would be two, I mean, three kilonewton per meter, diba? Uh, three kilonewton per two meters. So muna at two meters, six kilonewton na siya per meter. Yeah, at full length, that would be nine. So meaning every one meter may increase siya of three kilonewtons. So that's why it's six kilonewton per meter. So all you have to do is to get the area, diba? For the shear diagram, one half base times height again. And this would give you six. So one half 12 times one half 12, diba? that would be six. Um, this one is not six day, but so sa pinsha. 6 manetong loading no so 6 divided by 3 that would be um uh, 4 so 4 na siya so meaning kwande siya every every meter you have to increase by every 2 meters you have to increase by 2 kilonewtons so this is 4 day uh, so 2 kilonewton per 2 meters or uh, <clears throat> okay, 6 divided by 3 man. So 2 kilonewton per meter, per 1 meter. So 1 half base times height. So this gives you 1 half times 8. Diba? 2 times 4, 8. 1 half of it is 4 kilonewtons. So at this point in the shear diagram, this point here is 4 kilonewtons. And then for the moment diagram, you just have to get the area of this particular element, one half base times height. So I mean, it's not one half, but it's one third base times height because um, we're going to get the moment, na, diba? <clears throat> Or you can just utilize the same um, loading. Then you just get the kwan gapon. So you can just utilize the area, one half base times height. And then times one third of the base. Now, pidir po chay nana. Then you get eight thirds kilonewton. Uh, kilonewton per meter. <coughs> so, of course, you can also use one third base times height. Diba? <coughs> Area coming from the moment diagram. So, let's see if it's the same. Ha? One third base time side. Base would be two meters. Height would be four. Ah, so same. It's eight thirds 
kilonewton per meter. So you can just refer to the shear and moment diagram. So one half base times height will lead you to this shear diagram. Then since this one is second degree, so you can just have it as one third base times height, which gives you this one. So this one is eight over three kilonewton per meter this point here. Now, since we know now the moment, because the moment, so we can just directly use the formula. <clears throat> so again, since we are now utilizing the, let's say, the general formula, because we are trying to solve a certain distance of the fiber. So dilitam mugamito 6m over bd squared, but we're going to use the, the general formula, my over i. Or again, in other books, it's mc over i. Yeah. So moment would be 8 thirds kilonewton per meter, and then multiplied by the, the y, going towards the certain element of the fiber. So again, Y is always in reference with the neutral axis. So delay 25 atong gamiton, but we're going to use 50. Because again, we are referring so neutral axis. Okay, neutral axis. So multiply by 50. Okay. And then again, the moment of inertia for your rectangular shape is BD cube over 12, diba? Right? BD cube over 12. So this one is BD cube all over 12. So we're going to have here <clears throat> um, 75 and then 150 cube all over 12. So again, since your eight, your moment is in kilonewton per meter, so to make it in newton per mm, so multiply by 1 million. So again, um, try to review this one later why it's multiplied by 1 million. So it's coming from here, Gapon Ganesha. Ako siyang i-convert. Okay, so if the answer is positive, so meaning um, that would be intention as yeah, and you have stress. Six point thirty two, sir. So it's six point thirty two mega pascal. Yeah, intentions yeah, because it's a positive. <clears throat> okay, so questions so far for the first half. So first half is just dealing with the flexure stress panas, yeah. So balimuran siya yung bato niyo, murag simple kaya siya because again, you are going to refer with the shear, the shear and moment diagram always. Not so far, sir. Okay, sige. <clears throat> sige. So, paspas king oras nung isa pata ka example. <clears throat> okay, so 6.2, uh, 6.32 megapascal. So, that's in tension. So again, in tension, yeah, because um, if you cut the section here, it's going up. Uh, this one is going down, man. Then moment is, of course, in the positive direction side.
Okay, so let's go to the next item. So we're going to solve now uh, C. So determine the maximum shear stress. So C here is just, so that would be just tau is equal to one, diba? So again, shortcut formula, tau is equal to three V over two BD. So, so this is the right? So, wala na siya daghang kwan. So, 3. And then again, coming from the previous slide, the maximum shear. Diba? So, compute the maximum shear stress. So, it's not um, talking about any location, but looking at the shear diagram, our maximum shear is 9 kilonewtons. Diba? So, automatic, that maximum shear is at the fixed support gyapon. So 3 times the maximum shear, that would be 9 kilonewton. So to make it into newton times 1,000, para ang yang unit three is newton alang. Then divided by 2 BD, 2 times, <clears throat> so 75 times 150. Then this one is millimeter squared. Then you have your maximum shear stress. <clears throat> one point two, sir. So one point two mega pascal. And then lastly would be letter D. So determine the shearing stress developed in the fiber 50 meter, uh, 50 millimeters from neutral axis of the section one meter from the fixed end. So still the same. <clears throat> so in the previous slide, one meter gap one. So we have to utilize this information here. So same information that you're going to utilize. But this time we're going to use the general equation, which is uh, shear stress is equal to VQ all over IP. So for Q, the static area, you have to solve this one. Okay, you have to solve Q here. So static area is just A times bar Y, diba? So the area of the cross section of your beam times the the element that you are go uh, that you are looking for, which is fifty millimeters from the neutral axis. <clears throat> okay, so fifty mm from the neutral axis of the section, right? So that's is so that's going to be B times D. So ato lang I clearly define lang ha. So area is equal to bar Y. So that would be base times height <clears throat> times the direction. <clears throat> so this one is 50, di ba? Uh, bar Y lang sa para italisod. <clears throat> okay, so this is going to be 50 or uh, 75 times the depth, which is uh, 50. Right? <clears throat> and then 50 again. Okay, so you're only multiplying it by 50 because we're only up until the 50 depth, diba? Right? So, atura siyang a particular area ang inyo hang i-kwaan sa inyo hang uh, Q. Again, so, um, this one, if this one is your element here, the rectangular element, then let's say this is the neutral axis. Let's say this is the 50 mm mark. About 50 millimeter here. Okay. So, this is your area here. Muna siya inyo hang area of interest. Ah, bali, 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 bali. Bali akong drawing. 
Okay, it's coming from the neutral axis, Madino. So it's going to be uh, this one. So this is the 50 mm. And then this would be the area. Okay, so area is base times height, 75 times 50, and then the bar y, which is 50 as well. So, Monasha. Okay, Monasha in your Q. So, the shear stress at, um, of course, sa inyo hang, uh, kana inyo hang V, in reference with the shear diagram, it's 4 kilonewtons, diba? So, na solve na siya from the previous uh, items. So, solution wise, we now have 4 kilonewtons times the Q, so 75 times 50 times 50. And then I would be one ha uh, BD cube, diba? So, atong ibutan dari I is equal to BD cube over 12, which is equal to. <clears throat> 75 times 150 cube all over 12. Okay. And then base would still be um, 75. Okay. So, pwede rin siya incorporate into one big formula para di mo So, times 1000 para ang numerator is Newton per mm cube. <clears throat> Okay, so BD squared, so 75 times 150 cube all over 12, then multiplied by 75 again, and the denominator would be mm to the power of 5. Okay, and this would give you Newton per mm squared, so megapascal. Point forty seven megapascal, sir. So point forty seven megapascal. So major sayo na siya karon, di ba? Sayo ang topic karon compared before katong. Labi na when you're trying to get the deflection, tong previous topic tato nga deflection of beams katong. Major liso liso dito siya kay. Labi na sa pag generate sa area moment, asor katong moment area method na. So, Kanisha, it's a bit easier because you are just utilizing what you have learned from your shear and moment diagrams, and the formulas are generic. Yeah, you know, shortcut if you are going to be dealing with, um, let's say, rectangular beam. No, shortcut na so. So, I think what the, what I need to remind you is the Q here. Kanin yung hang static area is katurajong area of concern. So that's why it's 75 times 50 only. It's not the total um, area or section of the beam because you are just dealing with a certain portion of the beam and as your static area. So yang base times height is 75 times 50 only. It's not 75 times um, 75 times 150. <clears throat> okay, so this would be the solution. <clears throat> so for letter B. <clears throat> <clears throat> Then for letter C and then letter uh, D. Okay, so let's solve another problem. Let's um, <clears throat> let's say let's try to 
make the problem a bit difficult. So we now have two supports with a uniformly distributed load of four kilonewton per meter, and then a concentrated load of 12 kilonewton. So dire medyo na marag ma-challenge na mo dire sa inyohang pag-create sa inyohang uh, shear and moment diagrams, di ba? So compute the magnitude and location of the maximum flexural stress. Determine also the type and magnitude of the bending stress in a fiber 50 millimeters above the axis, above the neutral axis of the section of the, at the left support. So meaning is talking about the hinge support here, kani the pizza two meter mark coming from the left portion. So calculate the maximum shear stress. So, so calculate pa sa kuan, and then calculate pa sa magnitude sa bending stress at the uh, left support. And then we also have to calculate for the maximum shear stress. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is to solve the reactions. So summation moments about but in my part, I think it's better if we... So let's try to designate first letters in your supports, A and then B. So probably it's better for you to get the support at B because if it's if, if it's Asia, so you have to get the counter rotation on the left side and also the another rotation on the right side of the hinge support. So sa B, medyo ma-generalize ang rotation because um, it's coming from one end only, right? So first is uh, summation moments coming from B is equal to zero. So of course you can ha um, have still the notation. Okay, so this would be <clears throat> uh, 12. So let's try to determine first the uh, uh, uniformly distributed load. So four times the entire span, ba? that would be six meters. Then the center of it would be three meters from B. Okay, so solve the tana. <clears throat> so it's positive because it's counterclockwise. And then plus 12 kilonewtons, ba? 12 kilonewtons times one. And then the reaction would be a clockwise rotation. So that would be negative. Negative R sub A, then multiplied by 4 is equal to 0. So using shift solve, the reaction at A would be equal to 21. So 21. <clears throat> so 21 kilonewtons. So next would be, we can just have the summation of forces vertical equation to solve for the reaction at B. Uh, vertical, summation of forces Y. <clears throat> okay, so RA, that would be RA minus four times six minus 12 and then plus R B is equal to zero. So 21 minus 24 minus 12 plus R B. So R sub B is equal to <clears throat> 15, sir. So 15 kilonewtons. Okay, so you now have the supports. So let's try to draw it here. So this one is um, 21 kilonewtons. This one is 15 kilonewtons. So let's try to draw the shear and moment diagram. So, it's challenging because you're going to 
mag mas tako ang span sa inyo hang kuan di ba sa inyo hang beam dire ya yeah, daga pa jug loading uh, it's a combined loading so napa uniformly distributed load napa joy concentrated load <clears throat> but of course once you have um created the shared moment diagram the rest would be easy because it's purely formula based na kuana na solution Okay, so let's start off with the shear diagram first. So starting with the concentrated load, that is the zero first, then going downwards. So four times two, right? Four, one half base times height would be four times two, and then divided by two, that would be. <clears throat> Eight kilonewtons, right? <clears throat> so base times height, na area of. Ah, this one half base times height, but base times height, okay, it's a rectangular loading die. So base times height four times two only. So this is going to be a straight line going towards. So first degree, ta, right? So coming from a straight line, zero degree. So we're going to have it as negative eight. So area of the uniformly distributed load coming from the given item. Okay, then 21 going up. So 21 minus 8, that would be 13. So let's say this one is 13 here. And then 4 times 3, which is 12. <clears throat> So 13 minus 12, that would give us 1. So let's say this is 1. So again, this is uh, a diagonal line because the given horizontal loading is 0 degrees. Diba? That's why the next drawing would be first degree. So katong previous problem is we have a triangular loading, diagonal siya daan, first degree. That's why our shear diagram is second degree na, then so on and so forth. Okay, then 12, um, 1, then 12 going down, it, it, that would give us negative 11. So let's say this one is negative 11, this one is 1. Margin yung makaduka yung pag shade, ang pag drawing. Ano. <clears throat> and then we still have to solve again the remaining uh, distributed load 4 times 1. That would be negative 4. So negative 4 plus negative 11, that would give us negative 15. So let's say this is negative 15. Then negative 15 plus 15 going up. That would be zero. So this is your shear diagram. <clears throat> so, so given palang aning a shear diagram, we can expect that the maximum shear stress is occurring at the roller support, coming at point B, because it's negative fifteen, diba? So the rest is just negative A, 13. Na na. So we still have to verify this one later. Kung sakto ba niya ang assumption. Okay, so next would be the moment diagram. Medyo hiwi siya, no? Hindi siya medyo hiwi. Hiwi yun siya. Okay, so next is we're going to graph now the moment diagram. <clears throat> so 
the area of the shear diagram, one half base times height, one half, two times eight, that would give us negative eight, yeah, po, ba? <clears throat> so negative eight, so say this one is the point here. So first degree, um, negative, negatively increasing. So Atuang drawing is also in this format. Um, I think it's concave or convex. Uh, not pretty sure with the term, but Munashayahan curve. Okay, so next is it's positively decreasing, diba? 13 going to 1. So, Muragayahan kwan is para na siya, pa, pa concave na siya, diba? <clears throat> concave or convex pa. Sa di ko, na di ko sure sa correct term okay. okay, so area of this one, since this one is a trapezoid, so sum of the bases times the height all over 2. So 1 plus 13, 14. Diba? And then times the height, which is 3, divided by 2. So that would give you 13. Diba? So let's say this one is 13. <clears throat> so 13, siya. so again, because we are coming from negative 8, then going towards the positive side. Diba? So again, area. So 14 times 3. So pilam na siya, 72 divided by 2. Na. Then a minus yung is 8. So probably that's 13. Then muna siya, kanang marag, the other curve mo siya, di ba? Okay, then lastly would be the other trapezoid. That's 11 plus 15, then multiply by one. So that's 26 divided by two, 13. So you go back to zero. So this is your shear and moment diagram. So of course, looking at the figure, uh, this one is negative eight, no? So maximum shear is at this portion on the concentrated load. Then maximum, uh, I mean rather maximum moment is at the, where the concentrated lo load is located. Okay. Uh, so this one is second degree. Uh, first, uh, second degree. This one is first degree. So if we try to highlight again the different items where the maximum loading occurs, so negative 15, maximum shear, 13 kilonewton per meter, maximum moment. Ba? So meaning we can also first for the maximum flexural stress, which is 13 kilonewtons. So all I have to do is to use the formula. Sigma max is equal to 6m over bd squared. Uh, shortcut rate, so diba? Why daghan langan after solving the <clears throat> after solving the shear and moment diagram. So that would be six times the maximum moment that is 13 kilonewton per meter, then times one million, okay, para may mo siyang newton per meter, di ba? Newton per meter divided by the cross section of, I mean, the dimensions of your beam, which is 
100 in width, 100 mm, times the depth, which is 200 mm, and then squared, yeah. So this one is mm cubed. Okay, and this would give you Newton per mm squared, which is equivalent to megapascal. Nineteen point five, sir. So it's nineteen point five megapascal. So probably if you are going to to describe the location, so pili sa siguro mag-assign mo other kanakuan other let's say variables. Let's say this one is C and this one is T. Na. Then may mo at section D. Na. Maximum stress is at section D. Okay, so pwede rin po siya na na. Mag-assign mo other elements since uh, naka-assign ang tag A and B sa inyo hang kuan uh, supports. So probably the other Portion sa inyong shared moment would be another letter na siguro siya. Okay. So, next would be to determine the the bending stress of the fiber at the top from the top sa inyong left support which is at A. Diba? Sa inyong hangkon. So, if you draw again the diagram Uh, and your cross section. So this is the cross section here. Then this one is the neutral axis. So 50 meter above the neutral axis. So if this one is the neutral axis, this one is 50. So um, since this one is 200, so this one should be 100, diba? Okay, 200 man on depth. Then the width would be 100. So if the first half is 100, so this one is 50 also, diba? Walang extra lang information. Okay, so since we are trying to solve um, the, mo the bending stress at this particular fiber, so what we're going to do is to use the general formula, which is my over i. So again, um, y should be coming from the reference of the neutral axis. So we're going to use this one, 50. So moment on that particular segment, or let's say sa inyong particular um, support, diba? left support. Now the moment that we're going to use is this one, eight, okay? So that would be eight kilonewton per meter, then multiplied by, <clears throat> multiplied by um, y distance 50 then multiplied by 1 1 million gapon to make it a uh, newton per meter a uh, newton per mm then divided by um, bd squared diba uh, bd cube over 12 so 100 times 100, uh, 200 cube all over 12. And this one is mm cube. Okay, so the stress at that particular segment would be? Six, sir. So six megapascal. So I hope that you are not confused on the conversion game. But it's very important to convert sa inyo hang mga units. So, 6 
megapascal and this one is in tension uh, tension siya. so probably uh, um, para mas dali inyo hang pag understand whether it's tension or not so if you have a negative moment automatic tension siya so if you try to look at the the previous problem we have a negative moment said diba uh, negative moment so you're going to have tension automatically na pwede mo maglisod og sabot but of course if you kanang dili lang siya shortcut twice so i think the best way to understand is to isolate the section should and then try to determine the kanang behavior so kanya ko shortcut shortcut lang ako kay para dali Okay, then lastly would be the inyohang maximum shear stress. So of course, maximum shear stress is at the right support, which is the roller. So all you have to do is to use the formula uh, 3V uh, tau max is equal to 3V over 2BD, diba? So 3 times 15 and then times 1000 to make it in newtons. Then 2 times 100 times 200. Then it should be in mm squared. Then you have your tau max. So that would be in megapascal gapon. <clears throat> so the value would be uh, 1.23 1.23 or 1.13 1.13 the same huh? Yes, sir. 3 times 15 times 1,000 over 2 times 100 times 200. Ah, 1.13 siya, no? Hmm. Sige, ito lang ikuan. Tapos yung sarap niya nasa slide. Okay, so, kana, mara na siya yung button. So, you have to create first the shear and moment diagrams. So, mara yung pinaka-basic, di ba? Mara yung sa statics na nag-solve mo first our reactions and then so start of materials, okay, you have to determine the shear and moment diagrams. Then the information coming from the shear and moment diagrams would be utilized as a formula sa inyohang shear and um, bending stress. So uh, I think Marasha, um, mas dali ko makaremember aning a topic, eh, mga dali siyang a topic aning share in moment katong of course katong deflection of beams medyo okay okay pod siya but delicate siya um interesting kay eh. ana gani maglisod ka og imagine sa air, um sa slope ana sa equations na imo i create so probably um, mo siya mga topics na as far as I can remember ng um, sayon siya kay murag sayon man ang share in moment once you master share in moment the rest would be easy ana kay Everything would be in reference with the shear and moment diagram. Okay, so this would be the solution. So in this case, ang yung gamit lang is A, B, C lang. Ito ay ganina is A, and then this one is B, then uh, C na yung A, and then D here. So mo na ito ang gamit na to. Okay, so 19.5 for the, for the maximum uh, bending moment. So take note of the description sa location, di ba? So say, yeah, it's happening at section C. Ato at D lang siya. At section D lang atong ibutang. And then bending stress of the fiber 50 meters from the top. So again, MY over I, or again, if you're comfortable with MC over I, because mo na siya ang makita ng mga 
formula in most references. So you may use MC over I. As long as you have to keep in mind that the distance or the reference of the Y or C distance is coming from the neutral axis. So ang kaning 50 nga yung mean here is kaning siyang 50 coming from the neutral axis. And again, standard formula for the moment of inertia, BD cube over 12. Now for the maximum shear stress, that would be 3V over 2BD. So I'm not sure ano 1.23 should be, but say mo is 1. Point, quanto Steve no 1.13. 1.125 sir. Ah, uh, so in typo ra siguro ni. So 1.13 is the answer. Okay, so for the rest of, so since we don't have much time, 10 minutes na lang, then you have, if you have other classes, you still have to prepare pa. So I'm going to post the lecture notes again for this one. So basta naghapag na siya yung problems, naghapag na siya yung homework. Naghapag na siya yung homework said. So I'm going to, I think muna siya ang yung struggle dili later, kanin siya. Kani kani ti beam muna siya inyo hang medyo challenging uh, portion. Uh, so let's try if I can discuss this one next week. But I have problems at uh, homework problems but sa inyo ha. Yeah, na po yung sabran pa sample problems at if you're going to have unsymmetrical beams but Okay, so um, any questions before we leave? Um, can I ask, sir, kung kanus ang tentative date na you will set for the final exam? 